Hi, I'm Pastor Anna Haugen of Augustana and Berka Lutheran Churches, and it's I'm preparing for the Sunday's worship, the second Sunday in Advent coming up. Advent is a season of preparing for Christ's coming, both as a child in Bethlehem, but also um, Christ's coming again in glory. And the text for um, the second Sunday of Advent includes, as the psalm, one of the songs of the New Testament instead of the actual book of Psalms. And in this case, it's um, the song that Zechariah sang when his son, John the Baptist, was born. And it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful hymn, and it's been set to music many times. Uh, my personal favorite is in the New Lutheran Hymnal, uh, doing in the morning prayer setting, which the chorus goes, In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a song about what God has done for us. And in, it's in Luke, the first chapter of Luke, verses 67 through 79. And verses 74 and 75, um, say, that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And in some translations that that's translated, um, that we might worship him without fear. Um, because serving God and worshiping God are actually theologically very closely connected. And you can see that in the, um, in the, uh, in the languages of both the Old and New Testament. Um, anyway, so I had a friend who's also a pastor who posted on Facebook about this idea of worshiping God without fear. And what does it mean to worship God without fear? Because, I mean, most people these days aren't, in America at least, are not afraid to go to church. And so how do you preach about this when it's kind of outside the realm of our experience? And people pointed out, well, you know, Christians in the Middle East... Um, they can't worship without fear if they're in a Muslim country. A lot of times they, um, they have to worry about getting attacked. And somebody else pointed out, well, Muslim and Sikh and Hindu communities in the United States can't worship without fear either because they worry that the Christians here might attack them because it, it's happened. Um, black churches during the 1960s. And the civil rights movement, the height of it, had to worry about getting bombed. Um, and so in that context, worshiping without fear is a very powerful statement. And this connects also back to the context in which Zechariah originally sang his song, because this was during the Roman occupation of, um, of Judea, and you know, the Romans didn't really much like the Jewish religion, and the Jewish didn't. Jews didn't like the Romans, and so there was a lot of conflict, and so um, you couldn't always worship without fear. But I wonder if there's another aspect of this that is a little bit more um, pointed for today's Christians in America, at least. I don't know if you've noticed this, but our society today is really, really afraid of, like, everything. I mean, obviously we're afraid of terrorists and we're afraid of the economy uh, going bad again. We're afraid of that the other political party might win, whichever the other political party is for us. Uh, we're afraid of that things might change. We're afraid that things might stay the same. Um, and a lot of our political life these days is about playing on that fear praying on that fear and saying, you know, if so-and-so gets elected or if this bill passes, look at what the consequences are going to be and, oh, everything will just be horrible. Um, and we're afraid of immigration. We're afraid of people who aren't like us. We're afraid of so many things. And people react to fear in a lot of different ways, and most of them are actually pretty messed up. I mean, 
sometimes people respond to fear by attacking and attacking whatever it is that's making them afraid or even just whatever's in their way. Because if they get angry about something, then they don't have to, they'd rather be angry than afraid. They don't have to deal with that fear. Some people react to fear by trying to cover it up, trying to pretend they're not afraid um, and doing things that will distract them. And a lot of times these are things that aren't necessarily bad in themselves, but people take it to an extreme. Um, like, for example, people will take, you know, partying and drinking and doing drugs or sex or even eating. People sometimes will use that um, to like, so if they concentrate on the pleasure of that, then they don't have to worry about their fears of, you know, Anything from fear of being alone to fear of having people see you as you really are to fear of what happens if I lose my job to fear of what happens if um, just all kinds of fears that we're afraid of. And in that context, being able to worship without fear, being able to do anything without fear is really powerful. Um, if you'll notice, I've been I've been reading the infancy and birth stories in the, at the beginnings of the Gospels, um, because it is preparing for Christmas, uh, it is Advent. And one thing I notice is that when God sends an angel, when God sends a messenger to speak with somebody, the first thing the messenger says is, don't be afraid, God is with you. I mean, we, we get so afraid, and we get afraid sometimes of God, and that's unfortunate. It's understandable considering that there's been a strain of the Christian church in America for the last um, 200 years or so that's decided that the best way to help people be faithful is to literally scare the hell out of them. You know, if you don't straighten up and fly right, you're going to hell. And if that's the way you primarily look at God as this, you know, mean person who's going to send you to hell if you don't shape up, you know, then God is not something, yeah, of course we're afraid. And yet, when God sends a messenger, the first thing God says is don't be afraid. I'm here. And Christ spends a lot of time telling people that he loves them. I mean, even the people who thought that, you know, God could never love me. I mean, even the people who thought that, you know, I am just not good enough for God. Jesus said, yes, I love you. I may not like what you're doing. And in fact, everybody does things that God wishes we wouldn't do sometimes. But no matter what we do, God loves us. And God is with us. And no matter what we're afraid of, God will never abandon us to face it alone. God is always with us. Um, God takes the sins and the problems and the burdens of the world upon himself. Christ takes those on him in, in the crucifixion and the cross. He takes our burdens and bears them for us. So that we don't have to face it alone. So that we don't have to be afraid. And when we understand it that way, when we understand God's call that way, then yes, we can worship God without fear. We can serve God without fear. We can live without fear because we don't have to be afraid. Not of being alone. Not of what the future might hold. Not of anything. Because God is with us and will always be with us and will always love us, no matter what. And that's the light of Christ for us. That's the good news for us, that God loves us and we are not alone. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.